Hello, my name is Laura Victoria Ward, and I'm here with Marie-Christine Katz and Ofra Wolf. We are in New York State in various different locations, and we are just going to start moving and invite you in to move with us and to participate in this shared space. So I'm playing with weight shifting, just shifting my weight from side to side, and I'm imagining that I am in a big <laughs> bunch of clouds. And I'm just moving the clouds from side to side and pushing them through. Yeah, and each of us can relate to those clouds in whatever way feels interesting and feels good. But I am allowing the sensation of moving through clouds to bring me a, an awareness of my skin and an awareness of the space around me. And letting myself shift through. If I was... Dancing with clouds, how would I do that? And what would it feel like? Bringing in the sensation of dancing with clouds. What kind of sense of timing would I have within those clouds? And how would I breathe? What would my breathing feel like in the clouds? dancing in my clouds, I'm also going to have some awareness of these two other creatures dancing in the clouds. I see some other creatures whoo, dancing in the clouds. So I want to invite you to dance in some of your own clouds. Maybe you're going to watch some of what we're doing and participate, and maybe you're just going to find your own clouds, and that becomes so interesting that you don't even need to look at the screen. So as I'm in my cloudy spaces, I'm finding some real lightness in those clouds and some dense heaviness as well. And I'm playing back and forth between that light, easy movement and very dense, condensed, heavy, strong movement. And I'm giving my body complete permission to move in any way that feels good and interesting. Letting myself play with slowing down and speeding up. Finding lightness, finding strength, and being very specific as I chop and slice through my clouds, and also being very global, feeling and feeling the whole space around me, all of it, all of the clouds behind me, in front of me, to my sides, in those corners, up, down. And as I'm inviting more of that spatial awareness into my cloud dancing, I'm letting my limbs get more involved. So my arms were doing a ton before, but now my legs are carving and swooshing through the clouds, through the air. And I'm inviting my breath to really participate in that cloud dancing. And I'm going to let it get more and more activated, becoming more breezy and windy and blowy, like a storm is building in my clouds. Whoa, big spacious storm, letting my body go off of the vertical, out of its normal patterns, into different things, finding different ways of moving through there. Letting this speed up and build. We're going to slow it back down in a minute. So let yourself build, build, build. In whatever way you feel like building, whatever feels like getting bigger, getting more expansive, getting more activated, letting it build, 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 build. Building for another 10. Get bigger and bigger in your build. Nine, eight, seven, six. Build, build, build. Five, four, three, two. And on one, you're going to find stillness. One. And slow motion. And in your stillness and slow motion, 
What do you feel inside your body? Can you feel your heartbeat? Can you feel your pulse? I can feel my pulse in my neck. I can feel my breath. I can feel this activated sense in my whole body. And I'm looking at Ofra and Marie Christine, seeing what's going on with them. Finding softness, slowness, fluidity, and maybe some stillness. How do I feel in my body when I slow down, when I pause? Where's the internal space in my body? Where do I feel like I have a lot of internal space inside? Where is that internal space inside my body? Which immediately makes me think of the external space around my body. So maybe playing with this idea of moving between the internal sensation of space inside and then the space sensation of your body in space, moving through space. And allowing yourself to free up your time again so things can speed up and slow down, moving in whatever way feels interesting. And this, for me, is starting to bring in some internal and external rotation in my arms. And I'm going to start to let the idea of my movement shift into my into my joints and into the tense segrity system of my fascia. And I'm just seeing how does this body move? What can it do? How is it possible to move? Really like three dimensional shaping, sculpting, internal differentiation and connection. <laughs> And now it's become very interesting for me to look at, at my two partners and play with them a little bit, seeing what's happening there. And playing the game of connecting in the Zoom room. And I think I'm going to let this segue us into the next section of our participatory play experience. And we are going to put on some makeup and become glamorous ladies or weird, strange alien animals. So hard to know how it's going to turn out. And I think if you are watching this and you want to participate, then pause the video and go and get some makeup something to play with, and come back to us. Have some water. This is my makeup, by the way. <laughs> well, this time, I've got a whole pile of things in here. Woo! Yeah. Woo <laughs> so. <laughs> Gonna see how that lands on my face. <laughs> So here the rules are, there are no rules. Do what feels interesting. Play with whatever colors you like and break all rules. And we're gonna add one more element to this and that is the music of Alison Damroth, also known as Alison Babylon. This is from her SoundCloud song called Fine. Hopefully we don't blast you out. You may have to turn down your volume. Let's see what happens.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's bring that into a final frontier. Hmm. Play. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So the invitation was to get weird and play and support our own needs for connection and artistic strangeness, I guess. Yeah. Do you want to say more about support, Laura? You I do. <laughs> some beautiful words, and I'd love to hear more. I want to say that, well, uh, we, before we started our play, this is the first time Marie Christine and Ofra have uh, met. And um, I just have been inviting people into my weird shared space, or maybe it's not always weird, but um, to play and to participate in engaging with each other in unusual ways maybe, but what I've noticed that in, the, in my life in the dance community, and I have a dance company, Octavia Cup Dance Theater, I have felt that uh, there hasn't been a lot of support between, that's not entirely true, there's a lot of, with my, in my company there's a lot of support within smaller, but in the bigger dance world there tends to be an operation on the idea of scarcity and lack. So there's a very, oh, let me just fix this. There's just not enough support <laughs> happening on a sort of uh, fundamental level that you feel included and like you're part of a thing that people want you to be there. And I have found that very much in the somatics community. And I want to do the ad for Mark Walsh and the embodiment conference and the embodiment circles that I've been doing, meeting other people that are in the, because I feel like within the embodiment and somatics and communities, we understand that everyone benefits when anyone feels good. When any one of us is doing well, we have so much more capacity to support each other. It's, it's really funny to say that in this makeup, but that's been the reason that I've been doing glitter size. It's like when I put on a costume and get dressed up and dance around, I feel better. And then I know I can bring support to other people in that same way. So I feel like the, the, for me to feel supported for myself, I need to be moving with other people in community. And since that's not something that can happen right now, this has been the answer to play with other people in this type of environment. There, I think mean, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. How about you, Oprah? Oh, well, um, I have really loved connecting with you, Laura, and have, it's been one of the gifts for me of this strange quarantine period is to, um, you know, just feel supported by your um, freedom and playfulness and your um, invitation to join. Um, and also the, you know, the real ease and freedom um, with which you, um, you give and receive ideas, you know, um, you're not afraid to take something and make it your own. Um, and you're not afraid to give very generously. And I, you know, I, I feel like that's a lot of where the scarcity comes in sometimes is that, it, and you were saying this earlier, so I'm riffing off of your earlier words, is that there's nothing in movement that any single one of us has invented. And we really came up, you know, our, um, our generations of dancers in the age of like, you know, you, you were gonna have to come up with your own technique TM, you know, or we, we studied this dance technique versus that dance technique. And I found myself really turned off by that early on and seeking these much older movement practices um, because there's, you know, there's something in, in the movement that is beyond me personally. And that's what feeds me. And, uh, you know, being able to share and give and receive that, um, is, is the place where I feel I find support. Um, so it's wonderful to get to experience that. 
and, and Marie Christine, who has been an artist that I've known for a really long time, but very sort of peripherally, like our paths cross once in a while. But in this quarantine time, we have actually spent a lot of time together in various different um, Zoom rooms. <laughs> some of them that she has got going and some of them are mine. So do you want to talk a little bit more, Marie Christine, about your experience right now? Um, well, I loved playing with the two of you. And oh, hi, it's really nice to meet you. Um, um, I, I am not a dancer, but I love to move and I take dance classes and movement classes. So I love the sharing of the movement. Um, I, um, I also love the playfulness. And, and I think this is something that we need to find at this time because like most of you, we are doing everything on Zoom. Um, and so how to use Zoom in a way that invites to playfulness. It's really wonderful. Um, in terms of sharing work, in terms of, in terms of the support of the community, um, it's, I have the support of close friends and I have a community of artists. Um, uh, but I find it really hard to get to, to get farther ahead in the work I do. And, and uh, you know, I, I've been working for many, many years and I feel I am a constant emerging artist. Um, so, so, and I know the support is there. I know that there are organizations that are giving a lot to artists. Um, but there are a lot of artists, there are a lot of people like us who are in front of their screen right now and trying to figure out how to, how to be creative in this time. Or not, not only being creative, because there are lots of painters who are painting enormous amount right now or, or composing songs, but it's how to share it to the world. Um, and so the support, I think, it need, is needed in terms of the audience and, and the community. Um, oh, Laura, I don't hear you. You are off. I muted myself. <laughs> Somebody was in the bathroom. <laughs> like, oh, we can hear the flush and everything. How lovely. Um, yeah, I want to say that uh, I don't consider people dancers or not dancers. I think we're all dancers. If we move to music, if we feel like I don't like the distinction of I'm not of mm. this or I'm not of that. Like, I, like, it's hard for me to say I'm a painter, but I paint. And in this quarantine, like, I haven't felt inspired to paint these kind of paintings. Um, but I have felt inspired to paint my face and to paint something that's like, it's right here. It's immediate. It's not going to last. It's going to be, you know... Uh, this thing in this moment and that's actually one thing we were talking about also is how this time is really a time of improvisation and being able to go with what exactly is happening right now like oh this this screen isn't working or this thing isn't working well what can I do how do I make this thing work so that it's going to be okay it's not perfect but it's it's going to be okay it's going to work for us and I feel like the freedom that uh we can cultivate in our own body really cultivates a, a sense of being able to participate in whatever experience is happening. Like, so instead of going, Oh my God, I'm so triggered. I can't take it all this stuff. It, you go, Oh, okay. That's not working now. I'm going to tell everybody this speaker isn't working. I'm sorry. We aren't going to have sound today or whatever it is. And people just can deal with it. Like that's it. Like we just have to deal with the reality of what's actually going on. And also if it is too much and you need to turn off anything and, step away, then do it. I just took a, I was in a, a embodied marketing meeting with Mark Walsh the other day. And he said to the participants, how many, how, how are you guys feeling today on a scale of one to 10? Just hold up your hands, say whatever you're feeling. And then he said to everyone, he's like, if you're, if you said less than a five, turn this off, go outside, take a bath, do something to resource yourself. You don't need to be a part of this right now. And I think that just that idea of shifting the idea from, but I have to do it, I have to show up right now because I said I would. When your body is saying, 
you need to do something different right now. Mm -hmm. And I think with this, the earth and the pandemic and our bodies, it's like, yeah, the, the status quo is not working for anybody. And like, when do we wake up from that? If not now, and when do we tune into what's really happening in my body right now? Oh, I feel awkward and I feel uncomfortable. I, I need to share that. Or wow, that, this really upsets me. Or this, I'm feeling angry about these things. Not responding, yelling, but saying, naming what's happening. And then when we name those things, we can disarm them a little bit. Or we can share the experience with the people around us. And I think that that, that is like just such a key and maybe they receive it and maybe they don't, you know, it's okay, but you've said your truth. So I feel like the embodiment stuff and, and even the artistic engagement and sharing, like what is art, but a means of expression? Like, what does it say when I put the stuff all over my face? Like we can dance before. Do I have more freedom when I have this on my face? Can you take me less seriously? Can I be more of a jester for you? Can I be more of a fool? Because so much information can come in through play and unseriousness. I once said to somebody that one of my highest values was having fun. And they said uh, that when they first heard that from me, they, they thought, oh, she's an idiot. She doesn't take anything seriously. And then years later, he came back. And he's like, you know, now I get it. It's about enjoying life. You're, you want to enjoy life. I'm like, yeah. yes. I'm not saying don't invest or do the hard thing. Do the hard thing. I mean, I dance ballet. Like, could anything be harder and more like perfectionist? No. But, you know, I like dancing to music and I like listening to that, those classical music with other people dancing. It's hard and horrible in many ways, but part of it, there's a part of it that I like. So I feel like parsing out what feels right and what feels wrong in any moment is, you know, what, what, what this time is offering us. And these connections, like I would never have reached out to Ofra and, and, and also Marie Christine included me in her artists group. And I felt really honored by that. Like talk about coming, we're going to zoom and talk about our art, what's happening in our process. Yeah, and she showed up to my Zoom exercise classes and my embodiment circles. Like it's it's it really feels good to know that people show up for you, right? It's that audience thing. And play with you, participate. Ofra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much. I um you know, I I the, the thing that was really coming up for me, Laura, as you were speaking, um was um, and what I'm what I'm hearing from people right now is um, the the freedom to first of all feel what you're feeling um, and then to express it and I think that a lot of the pain that we're experiencing right now has to do around um, fear of what it means to feel bad to feel pain, to feel uncomfortable. Um, and the complete sense of lack of safety and then being able to express when you feel pain, when you feel uncomfortable, um, or just that you don't feel safe. And you know, I, I've really been observing this for myself, like what does it take for me to feel safe to, to express, to share with the people around me, I don't feel good. My mood is shit. My body hurts. I'm sad. I'm whatever it is, I'm depressed. And that of course, you know, in, in the moment that I'm able to express that it starts transforming, it starts transmuting. I'm really lucky to have these creative practices that have taught me just go express, find a way. Um, and actually, you know, the, the intensity of some of the feelings during this pandemic time have pushed me to share a lot more than I have in the past because I do, you know, really experience and, and maybe for some of the reasons that we started talking about the sense of lack of um, safety um, within the dance community, especially um, very rigid parameters for how you should express yourself in order for it to be um, wanted or yeah. acceptable or received with any kind of love, you know? Yes. Um, and now it's just a moment of like, oh, fuck it. Can I say that on this Zoom recording? Fuck it, you know? Like I, I, have to, I have to find ways to really feel free and strong in feeling what I'm feeling so that I can learn how to um, transform it, transmute it more quickly, more fluidly, more playfully. 
um, and not have to be afraid of the moments that I feel bad because I know that what they bring is this immense amount of energy and something new, something new is going to come right after that I haven't experienced before. So, yeah. Thank you. I, I would like to add that what came up for me uh, while we were um, uh, dancing and, um, and when I started to use this, those materials, which in fact, they are very itchy. That's why we had to remove it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think there is an element that before, before the pandemic, uh, we were moving forward in many individual ways in terms of the environment. Um, and, and in my work, I use a lot of items that I use on, in my everyday life. And, and I, think, I think one element that I, we, we are backstepping a little bit is that talk about the environment and what's happening. The, the environment still needs our full attention, even though we are using a lot of plastic gloves and, and we are back to using plastic paper, uh, uh, plastic bags. Um, so, so that came up and also this sense of the importance of breathing and the importance of breathing, the conversation can go in so many directions. Um, and, and, you know, we, we are all aware of what's going on right now. Um, but, but I think that's what came up while I was dancing. I wonder what came up for you. Um, well, I think you're right about the, I, I feel like to me, the planet and the earth body is, is a, is the same as our body and the way that we treat our body and the way that we treat the earth where we otherize it and objectify it. And, oh, let me fix this. Let me just change that. Oh, I can do this. Eh. And, and we're filling ourselves with these putrid things in order to fulfill some need that has nothing to do with our animal body. And I feel like when we can do that, when we do that to ourselves, it's very easy to do it to the earth. It's very easy to disconnect, right? We're disassociating our, our own bodies. So then it's very easy to say, nah, that person has nothing to do with me or that tree, or I can throw my crap wherever I want. My mom said something interesting to me and that was that when she was little and she grew up in a fairly poor family in Canada, in Manitoba, and she, with a lot of kids, and one time her dad made them all clean all the ditches. They were in a farming community. She's like, go, you gotta go out and clean everything. This is our land, and not just their own land, but the land of, you know, and it's important to, to treat it well. So they had to go plogging and clean it all up. And she said after that, it just, boop, lesson done. She's in, no more, no, there's no, you know, and those lessons, like, the lessons of emotional intelligence or, you know, feeling our bodies or this is our planet, this one planet, one body. It's all we have. We're not going somewhere else in these bodies, in this lifetime. We're going to be in these bodies the whole time. So the more that we can, you know, love ourselves, the easier it is to love outside of ourselves and to see that the earth and the planet is ourselves. Mm. The water balance between natural water and salt water and the planet is almost exactly the same as within our bodies. Like the cerebral spinal fluid is the closest thing to pure water in our body and our salt water. It's like that balance is, it's not a, a mistake that those things are in that kind of harmonic balance. Thank you, Bonnie Gintis, continuum teacher and uh, osteopath for that information. But like, yeah, so this is, if we can't, it's both. We have to be in this relationship and in this relationship. Ofra? You know, I, um, I'm very involved with um, the water issues here in Newburgh. Um, and um, that's, you know, really been my way of, of giving myself over to um, an environmental issue that touches me in so many ways, is, is close to my home. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, we just had a meeting last night and one of the things that I find really, really um, difficult and challenging 
is, um, well, first of all, it's, an, it's incredibly challenging to bring a community to work together around an issue. And especially um, a community like the one that I live in where there's very, very different cultures, races, socioeconomic classes and backgrounds. Um, and, you know, some people's lives are really freaking hard and they don't necessarily have the bandwidth, you know, to um, take on these things. And, and at the same time, you know, one of the things that I experience as most challenging is that um, people have very, very little um, permission and tolerance within themselves to try something new, to try an idea. How might we put this together? How might we reach people? Um, there's, you know, there's such a need to um, have something already be known and understood before people are willing to support it. And in fact, we're in unknown territory right now. You know, if our culture knew how to do this, if our culture knew how to stop, get together, and really make things work, it would be happening at a much faster pace. But, but part of our task right now is to figure out how to communicate, how to work together, and inevitably on the way there, there's going to be failures, there's going to be, you know, surprises. Um, and people's ability to tolerate that is, is very small. There's a fear, you know, there's a fear of getting behind something that you don't know what it's going to be, or you don't know how it's going to work. And so I feel like a lot of this for me, this is my R&D. Like in my own time with the people who are safe to go there and can support me in going there, I got to go to the far reaches for me <laughs> so that I can step it back, step it back, step it back and come in myself with a sense of confidence and permission. And, you know, even if I'm mostly making believe, convincing people that like, oh yeah, we know what we're doing. It's going to work so that we can get past those initial phases of, it's never going to work or what is it that we're doing anyways and so we're just not even going to try um, and that's why this practice for me is is such a gift and so important you know because i need to be able to go there in a in a setting that's that's really permissive and supportive and free so that i can experience that for myself and then find a way to translate it for a community that isn't ready to do this quite yet you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there was something I was going to say within that. Um, permission, freedom, all the things, communities, diversity, people having access. I don't know. I, I lost it. Sorry. Yeah. I just don't think we're going to get there if we can't, if, if we don't feel safe playing together. That's it. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> you just said it is it's like and, and play is a safe place to meet right traditionally communities got together through dance and play so like if your meeting got together and people could agree on a sound that they could all hear and get into a rhythm together if that was the way that we connected first and then we talk about the thing then the, the connection is there the hearts are beating together the lungs are breathing together right so I mean that's the the movement and the music thing where it's like communities, you know, in other continents get together and play music and they understand a rhythm together in their bodies. And that's something that we in this culture don't have is a, a, a rhythm that we, we believe in together or we can move in together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet, and yet there is so much music around us. Yeah. Uh, and you know, yeah, I, I, I think, I think people love music and people love community and movement and, and, and maybe that's what's hard right now. It's that, um, that difficulty to be together. Um, yeah. Yeah. So shall we turn off our recording? Is there any great deep things that we should say before it's over? I, I think I, just where we are, because I said we were all in New York, and I'm in Kingston, New York. I'm in Newburgh, which is about 40 miles down the river from Kingston, also on the river. 
on the Hudson. And I am in the Lower East Side. Yeah, Marie Christine's in the city. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess I would just say that, you know, if, if someone is watching after the fact and has gotten this far, like, wow, it would be great to hear from you. And what are your thoughts and what's your experience? Um, and how can um, you, we support you and how can you feel supported by us better? You know, let's keep playing and get better at it. Yeah. Well, if anyone has made it this far, bravo. We've <laughs> <laughs> made it this far and it's been fun. All right, so I'm going to close out our recording and we can talk. Bye. Bye but don't go away, Marie Christina Ofer. <laughs>